Do da 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 flat. Microscience. Hello. Percolating away on the table behind me, I've got some laminated steel. Uh, and what I've built here is a bit of a, what I was hoping would be an even moisture distribution device. It's basically one of those evaporative oil humidifiers with a knife amongst it. It wasn't originally covered in a paper bag, a plastic bag. It, that was to help contain more of the uh, moisture. Goodness me, sorry, that rain was a bit unbearable, wasn't it? Just watching it while editing. And I was like, I can't do that to you people. Um, so yeah, what we're testing today is laminated steels in my little um, percolator mist maker type system. Laminated steels, also known as sand may steels. Yeah. Are um, when you get a harder core steel and then two softer steels to be a bit of a protection or distraction, I guess, from rust. So smooth. <laughs> By your powers combined. And in larger fixed blades, you'll even find companies doing it a little bit thicker and even a little bit closer towards the edge to increase like the torsional rigidity of the knife. So it's less likely, I guess, to crack like the whole blade. Um, in a knife like the stretch, those I'll show you on the screen now, the lamination actually starts pretty far away from the edge. So it's not really going to offer a great deal of, uh, of edge stability or, you know, really resistance to anything. Stick that knife in and twist something, you may you know, chip or crack a little part of the, your edge off for sure. It's not that much protection, but that's also what lamination can be used for. Uh, in the V Toku stretch, I do believe it is most likely just used as a rust prevention method. So um, this isn't going to be any great leaps for any of you. You're probably all knife guys. Probably kind of know what lamination is and means. But I just thought it'd be interesting to show you a demonstration of it. So without further ado, let's take off the cover and you'll see how it went. It was five hours sitting in my little hot box that I'd made it. Um, and yeah, I'll show you the footage of me taking off the bag and uh, taking out the knife. Right, so you see here, this top part here, the lamination, uh, you can just see the color difference really, can't you? Big orange section, all rust, all along that edge of that carbon steel. And you see what the lamination there's doing? It's resisting it. Alrighty, so there it is. Sorry about the rain in the background, but um, that really does illustrate kind of what the sand my is for. That's just in its raw state. Haven't even touched it yet. And you just see kind of the level of protection that you get from that very stainless top layer of steel versus what the carbon steel at the edge will do. And I know this isn't rocket science to anyone, but I thought it might be just a cool demo at least. So. There you go. Uh, I'll take it off and let's see how it cleans up. And let's see the other side actually as well. <laughs> wow, okay. That's, I was thinking this would have filled up the whole thing. It is, uh, it's just ended up being the droplets, I guess. Oh well. <laughs> so that is it. That is it quite handily demonstrated on the other side of how it looks before. <laughs> and then check that out. Oh well. Alright, let's see how it cleans up. Often this stuff looks really garish, but if you get to it early enough, you can pretty much clean your knife back to how it was before you started. So let's go and try and do that, eh? Cool, so I hope you found that interesting. I know this isn't like, this isn't the most in-depth and this is probably a widely known thing amongst knife people, but I kind of enjoyed seeing it myself and how it actually works. So 
hope this has been of some value to you, and I'll uh, see you next time in a full-length episode, which means you get a funny intro of The Knife Lab. See you guys.